After the historic release of Israeli hostages, Hamas tries to attack again. I'm Yair Pinto, and this is your Boots on the Ground report about what is happening in Israel on this 130th day of the Hamas-Israel war. Before we start with the latest developments, I want to go back for a moment to yesterday's brave IDF rescue operation in which two hostages were rescued from Hamas. They were rescued from a neighborhood in the Shavora refugee camp where about 40,000 people live. This is a densely populated area that suffers from widespread neglect and poverty compared to other places in the Gaza Strip. The camp was established in the early 1950s by the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestinian Refugees in the Near East, commonly known by the acronym UNRWA. This organization was supposed to care for these people and help them get into a new situation where they could thrive and move forward, but instead it deliberately preserved their status as poor refugees so they could be weaponized against Israel. In English, the name Shavora simply means empty land and it is meant to symbolize the plot of land left after the war of independence between the railway and the main road in the city of Rafah. Even when there is no war being fought, the population of this camp suffers from neglect of the infrastructure and high unemployment rate, making the children of this camp highly vulnerable to the messages of extremists and terrorists. This is true of many other UNRWA administrated camps all over the region. At the head of the Rafah Brigade of Hamas is Muhammad Shabana. He is among the most prominent leaders of the Hamas terrorist network in Gaza and his name is high on Israel's most wanted list. With all of that in mind, let's go even further back to the events of October 7, 2023, when Hamas terrorists launched an attack against Israeli communities near the Gaza-Israel border. On that day, Luis Har and Fernando Marman were kidnapped from their homes in Kibbutz Niritzchak, together with Clara Marman and Luis's partner and Fernando's sister. Gabriela Limberg. Fernando and Clara's sister and her daughter Mia, who is 17 years of age. Clara, Gabriela and Mia were released from Hamas captivity after 53 days in Gaza. The photo of Mia with her dog Bella at the time of her release became one of the symbols of Israeli resolve for how she stood firm during the release. Merman who returned to Israel in good medical condition relative to his long stay in captivity, told the Sheba hospital that they were kept in a family home in Rafah and that they did not go through the branching tunnels running underneath the Gaza Strip. The rescue operation, which lasted about an hour and was carried out in cooperation between many military forces and the Shin Bet Israeli security force was planned for a long time and was launched only after the conditions were ripe for it. A force of the National Special Anti-Terrorism Unit, Yamam, walked 150 meters for a nerve-wracking hour and a half in complete silence and waited for almost two hours near the building where the abductees were kept. Upon receiving the order, they went up to the second floor and used a shaped charge to blow open the door of the apartment where the abductees stayed for 129 days. The moment that charge went off, the time for silence and stealth were over, and the time for decisive movement and action began. The fathers took Ha and Merman out of the balcony of the apartment, shielded them with their bodies, 
and eliminated the captures of the abductees in a storm of small arms fire. Remarkably, no Israelis were hit in this massive exchange of fire with the terrorists. One of the soldiers said, the abductees were shocked at the moment of the explosion, but they came to their senses quite quickly. We thought that the abductees would be weak and it would be difficult to cooperate with them. But very quickly, they realized that the IDF had reached them and cooperated to protect them. As they were preparing to leave the apartment, a large volume of fire was directed at them from nearby buildings. But the Israeli Air Force was on station with several drones and aircraft and the sources of the firing were soon hit and destroyed, allowing the rescue team to safely leave the area. They made their way to a point where a helicopter was waiting to take the hostages directly to Sheba Hospital in Tel HaShomer near Tel Aviv in Israel. As technically difficult and complicated as this operation was, you need to understand that it was a drop in the ocean of what the IDF is capable of doing. We have another 134 abductees that we're looking for, and not all of them will be rescued in such a dramatic way. But the Hamas leaders who are continuing to hold these hostages have been put on notice that the IDF can reach out and find whoever and whatever they're looking for. That includes hostages, but it also includes these Hamas leaders who need to know that they're not safe and keeping these hostages is not protecting them, but rather it's making them a target for Israeli justice. I would ask you to keep helping us spread the truth about what is happening in Israel by sharing these videos on social media and anywhere else you know where people who need to know the truth might hear them. In the background of the war in Gaza, but not directly related to it, Israel will sign in the coming days or weeks an agreement with the United States Department of Defense to purchase 25 new F-35 aircraft, which will be added to the 50 aircraft of this type that it ordered in recent years, of which 39 have already been delivered. By the end of this decade, it is estimated that Israel will have three full squadrons of this type of aircraft. The value of the deal is estimated at approximately $3 billion and it will be financed through the security aid fund provided by the United States to Israel in the amount of $3.8 billion per year. Additionally, the United States and Israel are negotiating a special aid package totaling about $14.6 billion to help Israel in this crisis. The US president has been very supportive of this aid package and it is expected to pass through Congress soon. It will include a large volume of defense articles, weapons, equipment, fuel, and ammunition from the American defense industry. This includes equipment related to the F-35 aircraft, but also additional units of advanced Boeing F-15 AI fighter jets. Other new aircraft are also needed to replace Israel's fighters and helicopter fleets, as the older units have been heavily used over the years and they require a lot of difficult and expensive maintenance to keep them flying. Even before the war in Gaza, and alongside the increase in the likelihood of an all-out war with Hezbollah in Lebanon, the Ministry of Defense and the Air Force have been calling for the renewal of Israel's air assets, including the purchase of a new squadron of 12 TH-53 Super Yasu helicopters from Lockheed Martin. Indeed, Israel has learned many lessons from this war in Gaza, and the IDF is looking to put those lessons into practice as we head into a new round of re-equipping, re-arming, and in general, renewal. The views of training doctrine 
and practices as well as other reforms will probably also be needed. However, that's all ahead of us and for now, the present fight is not over. The IDF spokesperson confirmed that an army aircraft attacked a vehicle in which Hezbollah operatives were traveling in the southern Lebanon area early Tuesday morning. This was after reports that Muhammad Alavia, a senior member of the organization Marun El Ghaz region, was traveling in that vehicle. According to the IDF spokesperson's unit, in addition to the attack on the vehicle, several terrorist infrastructure in the areas of El Adaisa and Al Khayyam, as well as two military buildings and a military site in the areas of Tir Harafa, El Jabin, and Marun El Ras were also hit. Please keep the situation in Israel's north in your prayers. There's no sign that things are going to calm down there anytime soon, and some signs point in the other direction. In conclusion, I want to salute the Israeli soldiers who lost their lives fighting against Hamas defending the country of Israel. Lieutenant Colonel in Reserve Nathaniel Yaakov El Kobi, 36 years of age from Haifa. He was a commander of the Battalion 630, Southern Brigade, fell in the battle in the southern part of Gaza. Major Reserve Yair Cohen, 30 years of age from Ramat Gan. He was acting company commander in the 630th Battalion and was killed in the battle in the southern part of the Gaza Strip. Major in Reserve Zivchen, 27 years of age, from Kfar Saba, a reserve fighter in the 630th Battalion, fell in the battle in the southern part of the Gaza Strip. I would like to ask you to please pray for the families of the IDF soldiers, those that are still inside Gaza defending our country, and those that were released and are reunited with their families and trying to get back into their day-to-day -day routines, jobs, and whatever they used to be doing before this war started. This is not an easy process, and we need your help. We need your help in prayer, and we need your help by sharing what is happening in this world, in this region, so that people will join us in prayer for the peace of Jerusalem.